there is a sequel. <laughs> there is a sequel, uh, which will be out in, I think, May 2016, according to my publishers. Um, there is a sequel to From Plastic to Bigfoot, and it follows Faye's journey. You know, she is on a journey that continues. Um, it's not going to be a repeat of the first book. She's moved past that. It's going to be what happens next for her. What are the important issues for her as a young woman in her life, in her relationships, in her in her growth and her development. So that's what the second book focuses on more. Um, part of it is also in Ghana, but for different reasons. And I will leave the reader to discover what that is. I haven't thought about schools because I, I guess I don't think about schools in fiction. Uh, my other two books are non-fiction. And both of those um, are fine for the schools slash university market. I haven't thought about fiction for schools and maybe that's just my um, not knowing enough about what schools are prepared to buy for their students. Um, I think it's a book that will offer insights into Ghanaian culture, into African Africans generally and their experience as they live um, in, in the diaspora. Um, and I think if they're literary teachers, uh, literature teachers, who would find this, uh, actually that's a really good idea, I, I, let me explore that. Let me explore that because I think, yes, when it comes to literature, if there are teachers that are teaching African literature or literature related to the diaspora or to contemporary diversity in, Africa, in the UK, then yes, I think it's a book that could probably fit in very well under those particular categories. Uh, there's a lot in the book and I think, you know, when I look back at the series that Anthony Mengele made of the number one ladies detective agency a few years ago, which was just such a brilliant TV series to watch. I just think something like that could be made from this book because the journey, the understanding of the characters, the different characters, the fact that it's funny as well as has some you know, pretty deep and poignant moments, I think would make it a great film, totally. And, and of course, perfect, beautiful scenery from Ghana. So I think it would just be visually stunning. And, um, and the dialogue just offers itself to, to really great, um, great filming friend or a screenwriter friend who thinks this is something that they can do and be the first and create a new wave of cinema, get in touch. I'm working on a third novel now, which is a very different story. Um, it is actually set in Ghana, but it's a very different story um, and perhaps touches on things which I've said I'm not writing about, but not in the way that is typically written about. Jacaranda Books, Arts and Music. They are um, a fairly young publishers, they are London-based publishers, and I think to their enormous and immense credit are publishers that it's all about reflecting diversity and the diversity that this country holds. So their writers come from all over the place, not just Africa, although a lot of them are African or of African origin. Um, but they do reflect the modern stories, the stories of um, people who are living in cultures other than their own, people who are experiencing change and transition. And I think the stories, I've read pretty much most of the books that have come out of Jacaranda, and they're brilliant. Such great writers and really, really interesting stories. And um, they've got a great catalogue. So Jacaranda, go onto their website and find out more. Advice if you want to be a writer. Well, I think first of all, there really shouldn't be a sentence like I want to be a writer. You either are writing or you're not writing. If you need to be a writer, and I say need to be a writer, you will be a writer because if you have the urge to express yourself in creatively through words, and people do it differently, some people do it through pictures and art, some people do it through music, some people do it through various other forms of creative um, expression, but if you have a need to express your your thoughts, your ideas through words, um, it's not something that anyone can stop you doing unless you decide not to do it. So I think the first piece of advice is, is do it, is take out that pen or get on that laptop or in my case desktop and just start putting the ideas you have in your head down. Um, people write differently from what I read about other writers. Some writers write in a total flow and don't really think too hard about what they're writing and come back to edit it much, much later. Um, I think because I've been an editor for many years, my natural inclination is to edit as I go. Um, 
and to keep re-editing to read to get back into the frame of the story before I continue it. But everyone's different. So first tip, just write. Second tip, um, I interviewed a very wise artist called Ben Jones a number of years ago. He's a black American artist. He told me a long story, which I won't tell you the whole thing about, but essentially the key message from that story was, you're not going to get chunks of time waiting for you to do what you love to do. You're gonna to have to take the bits of time that you make available to do the things that you love to do. So um, I would love to have nothing better to do than to sit and write all day long. That would be the dream. It doesn't work that way. Life's going on, I have bills to pay, um, and until writing pays enough to pay those bills, I have to keep going and doing those other things that I do. But you have to take the time. You have to snatch the minutes you have, you have to get into it, and you have to just write. Somebody asked me once, do you write when the, the muse and inspiration strikes you? <laughs> Hell no, you write when you get a minute or two to write and you just take it. Tip number three, um, do not apologize for what you write. Nobody is owed what you write. You're writing because you're expressing what you want to express, what you believe, what you feel at the time, the stories you think are burning inside your brain that you want to share. Um, and people will either love it or they won't. Well, that's fine. And that's all you know how to write. So you don't have to apologize for what that output is. Um, when you look around the shelves of the library, it's packed with books. A lot of those books you won't want to read, and a lot of those books you'll want to keep reading until the day you die. So that's the way it works. Don't apologize for your output. Own it. Be proud of it. You've done something most people never do, which is to move from talk to action. Be grateful that you've done it, and be very, very proud. Thank you.